M0 FXB, welcome to my channel. Yeah, so I've just been sat here thinking about all the uh, different changes to the hobby. So in the last sort of three, four years. Now, uh, three or four years ago, I was just, my hobby consisted of just listening to local repeaters, some simplex channels, uh, and um, maybe some of those repeaters had a digital connection to DMR. Uh, and then my HF radio, which at the time was a TS2000, and um, you know a bit of HF with the G5RV, and that was it. And to be honest with you, I'd been doing that for 20 years, and I actually, it's actually, I didn't love the hobby. It was just okay. It was something I did, did from uh, stemmed from when I was a CB -er as a kid. Um, so, what changed everything? Well, I'll tell you what. I um, the local repeater in West Supermare GB3WE uh, linked to Hubnet. Now, Hubnet didn't mean anything to me. We know now it's an all-star node linked to repeaters and gateways. Um, and um, you can join it, link into it, whether you're on a digital platform like D-Star or uh, your, ra your FM analog Bofeng radio. And so what happened, all these connections were coming in, it was busy even back then, and this was several years ago. Um, and anyway, after a while, after quite probably maybe even a couple of years of listening, I heard people saying the word Zello uh, and TeamSpeak. And, I, and I, so eventually that clicked and I thought, well, what is that? And that introduced me to the world of apps and applications uh, for talking to people using your phone, computer, and eventually what emerged was network network radio devices like the Enrico T320. Um, so that got me on a journey of being more interested in the digital side because up until then even Echolink didn't really interest me. If it wasn't a radio, if you didn't have a radio to interface with it, I wasn't really interested. Uh, but the thing about the network radios like the TM7, T320 and the N60 is they looked and, and behaved like radios. We know that they were Android phones, but they were so, compared to a, a dual band radio at the time, uh, like, I don't know, like an Icom 2820, or, uh, or 2730, is it? They, um, the Android device just seemed so futuristic because it had Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, color screen, touch screen. So that, um, that took me down the path where eventually someone recommended that I get a Pi Star Jumbo Hotspot. And being that I didn't want to spend money at the time, because that was because of my how enthu enthusiastic I was at the time, I didn't want to spend any money on it. So I bought a very cheap hotspot from China. I think it was £30. I got it going and uh, dug out a DMR radio that I'd had for in the in the cupboard for two years, which was an MD380, and got that connected up to 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 some talk groups can't remember which ones at the time and suddenly it was like I had a repeater at home so I was that was it then I like had my own repeater at home I could use the same radio to get into my local repeaters mainly listening to Hubnet at the time and that was it before you know it I was buying more hotspots different types of hotspots uh, using uh, fusion radios like the FT the Acer FT70 which is excellent um, I actually had a ICOM 2820 which had D Star capability, but I didn't use it. So there you are. I'm buying another hotspot and getting it onto D Star, and I'm talking on Reflector 30, um, Reflector One Charlie, and I would eventually I would use DCS 477B for uh, Hubnet, which I, I've always said Hubnet is uh, for me changed everything, and that's why I'm so enthusiastic about Hubnet and uh, and using it. So here we are, and then eventually now the latest thing is um, all the uh, the HF modes that are taken off, uh, like FTA and PSK and Whisper and all this kind of stuff. So HF's been changed by digital modes. So I just think it's a really good time for the hobby. I think that COVID, as horrible as it's, as it's been, has made the hobby, uh, has made, well, what's happened is a lot of people spent a lot of time at home so because of it, they've been looking more deeper and delving more deeper into the digital side of, of the ham radio hobby. And then out of the blue, the RSGB bring up the online examinations. 
and I think that was a really good idea because I've always thought that the foundation should be online it shouldn't be uh, you shouldn't have to go somewhere to do that it just limits people it's very basic uh, I mean in America they call it a technical license it's very basic learning and it can all be taught online with zoom and so I think that's been a really positive thing for the hobby loads of new people coming in yeah not everyone new coming in um, you know behaves as, as we like but then again how many of us fully licensed hams um, or how many fully licensed hams don't behave well it's just you know it's as good as the person isn't it so i just like to say that i think that 2021 is a fantastic time for the hobby um, and the community is growing all the time I, he I hear positivity on all modes all bands all the time you know go out buy yourself some of this a hot spot get yourself a raspberry pi 3 download some of these apps and give it a go you'll be surprised even if you think no i hate it unless i'm using an analog radio try it out you might be surprised so seven free thanks for watching my videos um i think we're going up to about 840 subscribers from in like four months i'm really pleased and thank you so much um just looking forward to breaking the 1000 mark um the subscribers to me isn't about um it's not about, I don't know, the way I feel with the, when I get a new subscriber is thank you for joining my world and, uh, being, and being part of my world. And if I'm lucky, I'll get to talk to you on air and we can have the same interest and just talk about what we enjoy, which is ham radio. 7-3, all the best.